Can you turn a cheap bike into a super bike? We're gonna try. A while back, we pitched a cheap bike that we found on eBay against one of the best bikes that money can buy to see what the difference was between them. The answer was clear and it wasn't good. The difference was vast. We did, however, get some better news a few months later where we tested a mid-range bike against a superbike. And in that instance, the gap between them had actually reduced quite significantly. The question now then is whether we can take another eBay special, but this time actually turn it into a superbike, all for less than the cost of a mid-range bike from the previous video. This then is the ultimate upgrade video. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is just faster. Breathe, rhythm, time job. Feels very stately. I like it. It is amazing what you can find secondhand. Of all the bikes that are in our area, this Trek definitely jumped out as being the best. Cost £260. It's got a great aluminium frame on there, although Judging by the paint job, I'd say that's probably nearly 20 years old now. Solid components on there with Shimano 105, although again, at that vintage, even though they are in good condition, there is probably gonna be quite a performance gap to the present day. Then the other parts on there, I think there's some that we can reuse and others we might even be able to sell to add a little bit of extra to our budget. The question now though, is with our combined cycling nerdery, just how good can we make this bike? I'm going to show you, but before I do, you better see how fast it is. Back to you guys. Because we're gonna be riding our cheap bike on different days, we're not actually gonna be able to compare the times directly to see whether or not we have managed to improve it because the weather conditions might be different, because we might be feeling different. So, in order to see whether we have made it better, we need another bike as a control. We need another genuine superbike. In this case, it's Chris's Orbea Orca Aero. So, to see whether or not we have been successful, instead of comparing the times, we're gonna be comparing the time difference between cheap bike and genuine superbike. Hopefully, we will reduce that gap between pre and post makeover. I've never ridden the unofficial GCN test circuit, but apparently stage one is the hardest climb I've never heard of. Although I somewhat doubt it, as it only climbs 220 metres in just under two kilometres. Just you wait, mate. Just you wait. But it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> oh, that bit doesn't. Are you ready, Chris? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, Si. All right, mate. Um, I'm just trying to work out the starting position. Drops or hoods? <laughs> I mean, there isn't, there isn't much drops. No, so I'm going to go hoods, mate. I think. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. It's a bit dead off the line. Ah, so we do a little review of the bike whilst we're getting going. And the first thing I've noticed, it's got a very forward slant on the saddle and the bars, and also it doesn't accelerate at all. I've got one more gear to go. If it gets really hard, I can always use it, I guess. Well, I actually don't know if it changes gear. Tires aren't very grippy, they're getting wheel spin already. <laughs> no, mate, these are the worst tires ever. Oh, it's rim in the spoke. Just gotta be a little bit careful not to shift too far into first gear because just get straight to the wheel is not ideal. I'm genuinely really nervous about standing on pedals. I might have to go for a bit of a weave across the road, and I must have a cadence of about 30. Now look, the wheel spin again. Like even on the slightest bit of moisture. Get to the finish line, a lap. How was that, mate? I'll be honest, I don't think you really tried hard enough. I there. went as hard as I felt safe going. I was either getting wheel spin, or the rear mech was sending the chain into the spokes. Neither was ideal and then you have this horrible feeling that something's gonna give. There's so much like torque and force on the pedals. You feel like something's gonna give at any minute. Oh, go gear shifts every few pedal strokes. Well, I suspect it'd be quite easy to sort that out then, wouldn't it, when it's a super bike. I reckon a fresh chain you could set, it'd be fine. Yeah, right then. See how it is on your old bear. Nice, oh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, right, you ready, Chris? Yeah, shoes tight. Ooh, nice. Right, Breathing. ready? Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. 
Beep, beep. Oh my God, it's so much faster. Looking good, looking good, looking really good from where I'm sat. Woohoo! Yeah! That's more like it. There was a bit of pain going on there. Oh, so much harder. Like Greg LeMond says, mate, cycling never gets easier, you just go faster. Yeah. I think you just feel like you can push more when you're confident the bike's all right. But the bike's not going to fall apart. Yeah, that'll do that for you. Is it the hardest climb you've never heard of? Well, unless there's another one I haven't heard of. Well, that's a good point. Three, two, one, go. Oh, in first time, always good. That was so uncomfortable, so hard to get into a pursuit, even with the cables. Like I used to race someone as a kid for a junior. It doesn't help. And then the saddle slipped at some point, and then you got the, the corner on the bridge. Caught me massively by surprise. Went in a little bit hot on the slipperiest tires I've ridden in years. That was really, I want to get on my nice bike. A bit floppy, a bit droopy. Slipped a bit with my mass on it. Ready? Any bleeps to do. Ooh. Yeah, that feels a bit better. Airy wheels, airy frame. A little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more confident on the little S bends that we had there as well. But altogether, it's just so much easier to maintain momentum. Cheers, guys. And don't worry, I'm sure that snot and spit will come off when I actually strip the bike down. And also, if you want to see an in-depth look at how I came to choosing this frame and why, there are a series of videos over on the GCN Tech channel where you get a little glimpse into how I turn it into something oh so special. Right now though, I'm going to strip the bike right down and then try my hand at respraying it. Nothing against Lance Armstrong, of course, but some fresh paint could take years off of it. come out pretty well I reckon for a first attempt at spraying a bike but let's talk about the build then and for this bike I've actually decided upon these components here from Shimano 105 group set and it's quite funny that I'm replacing a 105 group set with a newer version 16 years the junior in fact now I have bought these parts online and I'm sure that some of you out there will be thinking that's perfectly normal whereas others maybe not quite so happy about that but there is the simple fact, if you are looking to maximise your budget, then online is in fact the logical choice. Likewise, I found the wheels online too, and specifically these Vision ones. So I got these from Wiggle, and wheels are actually a super important piece of the jigsaw here because they really do affect the ride quality of a bike. Plus, they're all black, so they look faster too. Tyres, likewise, can really transform the feel of a bike. So I've gone for the old classic here, a pair of Continental GP 4000s, and luckily I've even been able to reuse the existing inner tubes, therefore saving a little bit of extra cash. Now, take your mind back to the existing handlebars. They were weird looking things, weren't they? And they used a old standard uh, clamping diameter on the stem, so 25.4 or 25.8. So I've replaced them with a pair of shallow drops of some compact style handlebars. 
And of course, because of that old stem diameter, it means I'm having to upgrade the stem there too. So I've gone for something all black just to help match it. And then inside of here, I'm actually having to use a shim as well to match that inch diameter fork. And then we've got to match up the seat post too, haven't we? So I've gone for an all black affair again and managed to source this saddle off of a mate of mine on Facebook for just 25 pounds. Now, some of these parts will improve the comfort and feel of the bike, but some, well, it won't make your bike any faster. But a lot of this, remember, is in your mind when you're riding along on a pimped up bike. Total cost, including the bike, £890.36. Now that's not including the £100 that I made back at a local bike jumble sale selling all those old bits. And you know what? I don't think that looks far off a superbike. Awesome. The question now though is just whether all these upgrades will have made it go any faster, as well as looking faster. We are back back to our random field, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, and our two-stage tests to see whether or not the cheapish bike that John found on eBay has now become a superbike. As you may know, this isn't actually the first time I've seen the bike in the flesh, but it is the first time I've had it set up in my position and it's out on the road, ready for me to ride. And I don't know about you, Si, but I think John has absolutely nailed it and it looks brilliant. It does indeed, it looks fantastic, but does it go any faster? Well, I think we're about to find out, and I'm quite apprehensive about this because I now know how hard that test climb is. As before, we're not directly comparing this bike to itself, we are comparing it to my superbike as a benchmark. So when we come to doing the times, we've got something to compare it to. That's right. Has it managed to close the gap in terms of performance to your Orbea Orca Aero superbike? Yeah, I think it's enough talking, Si. I think we need to get on and do this. Yeah. Our legs now need to do the talking, Chris. Ooh, I like that phrase. Yeah, mine don't talk very loudly. <laughs> I don't think mine will be either. <laughs> Actually, they scream quite loudly these days. When was the last time you went out here flat out, Si? Uh, probably the last time I had to for GCN. A couple of years? Not quite, but nearly. What was your time back then? I don't know, mate. Basically, no pressure is all I'm saying, Si. No, there is no pressure. Uh, I'd right. never ridden up here before. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. One, go! Well, I can pedal for you a bit faster than the last time. Could use all the gears. Feels better out the saddle. The climb's still hard though. Never gets easier that climb. That was it, dude. Oh man. It was so much better than last time on this, yeah. on this bike. You managed to get some power down. Yeah, the only problem then is you go so hard, that it really, really hurts. Yeah. But I think, we're gonna to need to check, but I think two minutes, oh, which is an unbelievable difference. It's almost incomparable, because yeah. last time the bike was screwed. Yeah, similar temperature, similar fitness, but being able to get out of the saddle and ride it as you would normally ride it on that, or you know, in any other way, makes all the difference. Yeah. Do I have to do this, Chris? You do, because it's part of the test site, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, but it's all right, you've got gears this time, unlike when I rode it last time. Good point. So you'll be all right. Okay, count me in, mate. Three, two, one, go! Look at the power. It feels very different, but it's definitely not unpleasant. Like. It feels very stately. I like it. Well, instantly I've got a lot more drive off the line. Definitely accelerates a bit faster. Oh. 
Oh. It's funny, you know, if you're going on feel, like yeah, the bike feels heavier, but two important things jump out at me, first and foremost, and neither of them are related to the price, or the value of this bike. The fact that this is my size as opposed to Chris's bike, which is a bit small for me, it suits me better. And then secondly, the gear ratio that John's put on is a bit bigger. Yeah, neither of those things are related to the price of the bike. And both of them were my one thing that I need to take home from this climb. Other than the fact that it did feel a bit heavy. Go on, Chris. That doesn't look very fast, mate. Just, yo, up, 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 up. Go on, mate, yes. Good work. I tried so hard to pace it. Not to go too hard before the steep bit. Yeah. And then save a little bit over the top. All right. No. No. Well, to be fair, mate, that kind of pacing oh. takes quite a lot of experience to get it right. And, uh, no. you know, I guess relatively new to this with 20 odd years. It'll, yeah, it'll come, mate. It'll come, yeah. Can I collapse now? Can you what? Collapse. Sit down somewhere. Yeah, go on. Nice feel just over there. All right, Chris. Are you ready, mate? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. All right, I'm gonna do some bleeping now. All right. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's a good start. Cheap bike, now super bike. How was it, Si? That looked like you're getting fast. I was trying hard. Whether that was fast or not, I don't know, but. My first reactions, like, obviously this is not a fast bike, like it's got normal wheels in, it's not aero in any way, but it felt good, you know? It just felt really, like, pleasing to ride. It felt like a new bike, which is, you know, credit to John. Yeah. And the other thing as well is the little touches, like, I mean, he's done a mega job building it up, so actually it feels very special from that perspective. It just looks really clean. It does look smart when you look at it. Funnily enough, you mentioned John, I was getting messages whilst you were doing your time trial, asking how it was going, what the bike felt like. I think we could give him a big thumbs up emoji. That's not a bad accolade, that is it? No. Beep, beep, beep. Good start. Breathe, rhythm, time job. Wow. I grew up on a farm, so I feel I can say this. The bloody farmers. Go on then, mate. All right, so that's, that? it, it's a transformation of a bike. It's very different to this one, but compared to its old self, there's so much more feedback in the tires from the roads. So that's the first thing. There's a little chicane that we navigate here, isn't there? And the first thing I noticed last time was that I thought it was gonna fall off. Whereas this time, there's just, you, you squeeze the brakes. The brakes have got a much more confident rim surface. The tires, they give you feedback from the road. You can feel what's going on. Obviously the frame is no stiffer than it was before, but the wheels are, the bars, the stem are and all of that just adds to the confidence of the bike. It's still a little bit sluggish to accelerate compared to that, yeah. but it is a super bike. It's a good position for me, because it's quite long, isn't it? Yeah. I get nice and low. Most importantly of all, the colour. Did that make you go fast? Well, looking down and feeling like you're on a brand new bike, because it is pristine, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It does make you feel good. Yeah. Well, there you go then. That's pretty good, isn't it? Okay. I'm just gonna say one thing before you go, Si. Go on then. This is my bike, the first bike I had after retiring, and I'm quite, I've got, I'm quite particular about it. It's got some special memories that we've shared together, so yeah. look after it, please. Well, your brakes are on the wrong way around, so that's a caveat. Well, just go gently then. <laughs> yeah. right. A gentle Max TT. A gentle right, Max TT. I'm all over it. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Yeah. 
Nice Gotta make sure I'm still aero. I'm sorry, but this is just faster. You can feel it straight out of the block. Look at you, side. Oh, how was that? And I haven't looked at the time yet, but I bet quite a bit of cash that this was faster. It felt faster, like off the line it feels faster, holding your speed it feels faster. Yeah. It's now time for the results. Don't worry, I won't keep you hanging for long. In its initial state, remember, our cheap bike was 1 minute 50 seconds slower on the climb with a stop for a mechanical issue compared to our superbike, and 48 seconds slower in the TT. And after John had finished with it, the gap on the climb was down to just 23 seconds. Coincidentally, exactly the same time gap that Sai had. And in the TT, the gap was seven seconds for me and 10 seconds for Sai. In percentage terms, it was 18% slower when climbing, and that's now just 5%. And on the flat, it was 10% slower, now down to 3% slower. That is some serious performance enhancement. However, in an hour long fast flat ride, that's still about a minute and a half slower than the Orbea. And on the climb, it would be three minutes. Although if I'm honest, I don't think I'd make it up that climb if it lasted an hour. Just like the looks, the performance of this bike has been transformed beyond recognition. I mean, the brakes now work when I want them to. That's a bonus. The tires grip when going around corners. The gears not only change, but the chain no longer gives me so much fear that I daren't stand up and snap. Yeah, okay, so without doubt, that bike is now significantly faster than it was. But it's still not a super bike, is it? I mean, it's just not. And it's probably not surprising. It's not aerodynamic in any way. I mean, the frame is still exactly the same and the wheels are not aero. And although it is much lighter, it's still not super light either, is it? It's, it's not quite. But I do think it raises two questions though. Is this better than a mid-range bike of equivalent value? And would you be better off spending all your money on a new bike? Or, or and, is speed the best measure of a super bike? Well, Two very good questions there. I think firstly, know that a bike is not better than a mid-range bike of equivalent value. And I'll tell you why, I think firstly, because the components are effectively the same. Yeah. 105 group set, you know, decent set of wheels on there. But these are hung on a frame that's not far off 20 years old. And it's got to be said, frame manufacturer, particularly aluminium like that one, has come an awful long way in 20 years. So you could buy one that is significantly lighter, probably stiffer, and definitely more comfortable. And even when we look at the performance of the mid-range bike that we put against the superbike, the fact is that one climbed significantly faster than this. I mean, I think it was eight seconds was the difference, whereas this is 23 seconds slower. But credit where credit's due, this was as fast proportionally on the flat. So it's not all bad news for this one. But then in terms of whether speed is the only measure, no, I definitely don't think it is. I think what sets that bike apart is the kind of the work and the effort that's gone into it from, from finding it and buying the original bike through stripping it down, painting it, painting it again, then choosing the components and finally building it. I mean, that in itself, is a really, really enjoyable process for a lot of us bike riders. And then the other thing, we don't all have 900 quid knocking around with which to go out and buy a new bike. Whereas actually what we might be able to do instead is upgrade our bikes piece by piece until eventually you end up with something that performs brilliantly and absolutely looks fantastic. Something that you could without doubt be proud of. Yeah, and what's also really cool is it doesn't actually take that much effort to breathe new life into an old bike. No. I mean, John's done a brilliant job of respraying this, but you could do that at home as well we could have salvaged more from the original bike to save money. And then we could have been far more creative with what we came up with. I mean, we could have put flat bars on it and turned it into a town bike, or to save loads of money, we could have turned it into a single speed. Although yeah. I don't fancy that hill on a single speed. No, good point. I guess if there's something to take then from this video, it's that actually you can, as you say, breathe new life into a bike. So maybe if you've got some old hunk of junk lying around in your shed, slowly rusting away to a pile of dust, you could maybe look at it and think, well, actually, there's a project there and you can make something really fantastic out of it. Anyway, let us know in the comments section what you think of John's 
what are we calling it now? Cheap bike, super bike? Super work of art. Cheap, cheap super bike? Anyway, let us know in the comment section. Give it a massive thumbs up if you've enjoyed the process as well. And if you would like to see another video, then why not compare it directly with the mid-range bike to Superbike.